Hi, this is um, the parent provider agreement journey and my name is Mana Ward. So let me just take you through a couple of slides at the beginning as an uh, introduction. So the aims and objectives, first of all, our aim is to introduce you to the digital service and understand the parent provider agreement journey. So this session will go through the steps the parent follows to set up an agreement and then the actions that you as providers need to take to manage those agreements. So we recommend that you read the supporting information which is available online. With the content, I'm going to cover the following key topics, which includes signing into the government gateway um, for parents and as yourselves as providers. That's how you access this digital system. I'm going to continue with the process for parents to request the childcare offer hours. In other words, to set up the agreement. Also, the process for you to manage those agreements for your setting. I'm going to mention what the local uh, local authority will also see. This will be step by step demonstration and I'll signpost you to further help and support at, towards the end. And um, as Amy just mentioned, there is a Q&A panel for you to ask any questions during the demonstration, but hopefully um, as I go through all these steps, um, a lot of those questions will be answered. So let me uh, make a start by setting the scene. So the situation is that the parent has been successful in having their parent el eligibility application approved by the LA. And as a provider, you're over here on the in the blue box. As a provider, you've registered your setting successfully on this digital system. So that therefore the parents can choose your setting from the list, which will come up as they go through the steps to request the childcare offer hours. Therefore, it's important that you have registered your setting on this digital service and as Amy just said, uh, there is still time. You need to register the setting. By the end of October. So um, here you are on the graphics in the bottom here. This is a picture of the parent and the provider agreeing with the arrangements to access the offer. So the parent will receive the hours they're entitled to through the childcare offer. And you as setting providers will receive the funding for those hours that you will claim for through the childcare offer. Um, so as I go through this demonstration, just to explain that there is a, a plan, there is a key here. So with the parent's eligibility application having been approved, I've written that on this white box. So anything with a white background refers to steps to be taken by the parent. And for providers, any steps that you need to take, I'm showing up in a blue background. So as I go through, you'll see it's the parent that sets up the agreement. And so in order to go through these steps successfully, they would have had to have had the conversation with you. And the LA in order to input the required information to the system. So they would know which child, uh, which early education setting they wish, uh, what hours they want, term time, holiday time or both. And which setting or settings, because it can be more than one setting, they wish that childcare offer hours from. Therefore, you as providers will expect to see the agreement on your screens when the parent submits the agreement. And then it will be up to you as providers to review the request for the childcare offer hours and accept. 
So the parent, the local authority and your setting will be able to view the agreements and each one of you has a specific role. So the parent requests the childcare offer hours, that is sets up the agreement. And uh, we just need to be clear that this is not a booking in the system at all. The purpose of the agreement is to make sure that the parent and the child, of course, can access the childcare offer hours through you. So now we're at the parent requesting the childcare offer hours because the LA has already confirmed that the parent or guardian is eligible for the offer. You've also had the conversation offline and agreed the number of childcare hours available at your setting. So here are the steps to start with the parent um, as yourselves as providers, you both sign in through the government gateway. And that means entering the 12 character user ID in the relevant box there for the government gateway and of course the password and then they click on the green sign in box. It'll then come up to ask for the access code. So you'd get the access code from your personal mobile phones. It'll be that six digit access code that arrives on your phone, I expect. And you pop that into the access code box there. And if you're going to be on the system providers, particularly if you're going to be on the system for the week, then you can click that other checkbox to remember me for seven days. And then parents, as with providers, you click on continue. For the parents, they arrive at this very first step to request the childcare offer hours. And you'll see that there is a blue text here which says request childcare offer hours, which they would click on. So that's the uh, first step. Um, here they'll have clarification of the offer itself. Uh, it'll clarify that there are two elements to the offer, the early education and the funded childcare per week. So there's 30 hours during term time and holiday time, but during the term time it also includes a minimum of 10 hours of early education. However, you know, we are aware that of course there's a variation in the number of early education hours across different local authorities and that information has been inputted into the system. So behind the scenes, we've got all that data. So we have a reference data that knows exactly how many hours early education hours are for each local authority and how many childcare off hours are available then during the term times. So that calculation is done behind the scenes. Um, as a setting, the system knows which childcare setting also offers early education, by the way. I uh, hear on this information screen for the parents, it also uh, just makes clear that parents are aware of the four weeks of unfunded childcare hours. As it says, the offer is available for 48 weeks of the year and you'll need to fund the remaining four weeks of the year yourself as these are not funded. So it's clarifying the offer. So then to move on, um, they're asked which child do they want um, to access the childcare offer hours? So I've got Amy Jones and Thomas Jones here. So these names, um, as Amy explained earlier on, these names come from the parent eligibility application. So the provider setting details, the parents details, the agreement, the claims, that all this information is all interlinked on this one system. So the names appear here along with the, their date of birth. Uh, which is how the eligibility calculations is done in the background. 
So I select um, a, the parent would select one of the children and go through the agreement steps and then they can come back and select the other child and go through the agreement steps. So here we go. So I was going to select a child and then here. Before they start. They need to tick the option on the bottom there to confirm that they've had that conversation with you as the providers. Therefore, the parent already knows which setting, which early education and how many hours they're going to request before actually coming on to the system. They've had the offline conversation with yourselves and with the local authority. So they tick that box in the bottom there which says I have agreed the offer hours with my setting. Then on the next screen, the system asks from what date? So here you they'll be faced with a rolling list of eight weeks uh, displayed starting on a Monday. And the system again knows the dates that that child is eligible eligible to start the offer. As it says on here, based on your child's circumstances and eligibility and all that information has been fed in with the pair through the parent eligibility application. So here the parent will need to select the week they wish to take up the offer. Um, even if they want to uh, the child to start on a Wednesday midweek or Thursday, the parent will still need to select the Monday of that week. So for this week, if I'm starting today, I would select the 17th of October for the Monday. So they select the relevant week. And that means in order for the claims to be submitted by yourselves as a provider, it will be paid for for that whole week. Um, next, it'll, the system will ask to set their agreement end date. So here the system has already calculated the agreement end date based on the child's circumstances and eligibility, as it says here on the screen. But you can change the agreement end date now or at any time. So here Amy is eligible for the offer until the 31st of August next year, 2023. The whole time that she's eligible. And the question is, would you like the agreement with this setting to run until this date? So possibly the majority of people would would say um, yes. But the system is quite flexible for parents who may be working, who may work various hours, shift workers or have shared custody of the child. So it is possible to um, say no, you don't want it to end until next year. You want this particular agreement for these term time hours to continue until perhaps end of this year. And then next year you want a different agreement at a different setting during the term time for next year. So there's flexibility in the system. And it's possible to have up to a maximum of four agreements with two different settings. So you can have term time and holiday time at a setting, or you may wish to set up an agreement. Sorry, the parent sets up the agreement for term time with a setting and holiday time with a different setting at different times. So I'm going to select uh, the yes option in a second, but just to show you how the system is flexible, if the parent selects the no option, they would have this screen coming up to ask them, OK, what is their choice of the agreement end date? When do you want the agreement for Amy to end? And they'll enter the end date here in the box as long as it doesn't exceed the eligibility end date. Um, if it does, it will come up with an error message as a flag. Uh, it's a red banner of any error messages on the system. So if hours are varied, 
it's possible to change the agreement dates um, every week, every other week or term time. So next, if we look at the early education, the question here for early, early education, have you received confirmation of your early education from your local authority? So the question here is, uh, sorry, the answer would be yes, you have received confirmation of your early education. Uh, no, if they haven't received confirmation as yet, but then if they receive it later on, they can update, parents can update the early education setting choice. Um, every child is entitled to early education and they will receive 30 hours of that childcare a week during term time. But a number of hours, a minimum of 10 hours of early education is allocated to that setting. So they could they could say, I don't want to use the early education, but as it says on here, if you don't wish to take up the early education entitlement, you'll receive 30 hours of childcare a week during term time, less the default early education. And built into the system is the number of hours for each early education setting in that particular local authority area. And um, all local authorities provide a minimum of 10 hours per week of early ed. So, only settings, just to remind you, only settings that are registered on the system can provide the funded childcare offer. So here with regard to early education, if I move on and I've said, yes, I have had confirmation of the early education in this example, then they'll be faced with this screen where they would select the early education setting name. So I'd give it a little bit of a hint. I've typed in Aberaeron. If I typed in Aber, then I'm going to have a huge list of education setting names I would expect for Wales. Um, it can show up to a list of 50 setting names at a time, and then the parent would have a look through the list and confirm the one that they actually want. So a little bit more, the more help they give, then the easier they, it is for them to find the actual education setting and the same would go for the childcare offer setting. So they can enter minimum three characters here. I put in Aberaeron and then that would come up with the next screen, which asks, is this the correct early ed setting, early education setting? So I'd confirm it. And then from there, with all the information that's in this reference data behind the scenes, the system would be able to calculate how many hours that's available during term time for the childcare. So Abrero, for example, here, the early education that they provide is 12 hours, 30 minutes. That's from the 30 hours that's available, leaves us with the 17 hours, 30 minutes per week of funded childcare to use during term time. So it's already done for us. And we don't have to remember that as we go through the steps, which I'll show you. Holiday time, of course, um, is the 30 hours, the full 30 hours is available here per week during the holiday time. So on the next screen, it'll ask, OK, what's your selected childcare setting. So again, as before, the parent will enter minimum minimum of three characters or preferably more to find your setting. Hopefully, as long as it's registered, you've got until end of October, just to remind you. And they click on find and it will bring up a list possibly and it'll, until you narrow the search to your setting name. And again, um, when they make the option, it can be it'll be confirmed so the parent can confirm or they can search once again. From there, they can they're asked to request term time hours. Do you want to request term time hours for Amy? Yes, I do. So I'm going to go on. Oh, 
And now we've got how many term time hours do you want for childcare for Amy at this particular setting? So it's pulls through the number it has already calculated in the background. So there's 17 hours, 30 minutes available. So the parent will go for the maximum number of hours that they know they're going to use per week. So if the maximum that they know that they're going to use, because it could vary week by week, um, but most of the time they will want the 17 hours 30. They would input that in the hours and minutes box. If they know that the maximum is going to be 15 hours each week, possibly perhaps with some variation, then they would put in 15 not not in the box. OK. Um, there's some help guides there for the parent. How is this worked out? Because of all the information, the reference data are already inputted in the system. My childcare hours change regularly. Well, they've put in the maximum amount in here. So actually, when it comes to the claims, then the actual number of hours will be inputted. But that's claims, and we're going to do a live session on claims in December. So let's just focus on agreements for the time being. The other question here would be, I use more than one childcare setting. And yes, that's fine. This system is flexible, so you can select up to two settings, but you can have up to four agreements across those two settings. So I can have a term time hours with a setting. I can have holiday times with a different setting. I can have term time and holiday times with a setting, a term time holiday time with another setting. That would be my four agreements. So that's that's not a problem. That's flexible. This system is flexible flexible enough to accommodate that. So here it'll ask, do you want holiday time hours? So you can continue and you can uh, request your holiday time hours. Or, or you may want to stop at that point with the term time hours at that particular setting till the end. And you can request childcare off hours during holiday times with a different setting and go through that step, those steps to set up that agreement. You can do it that way. So, yes, I want holiday term time hours. And again, it will remember, oops, click too soon now. Um, and it'll pull through that there's 30 hours available. And once again, the parent will put in the maximum number of hours they know that they'll need per week. It may be a slight variation each week, but at most, I'm going to need the 30 hours or possibly the 20 hours. And they'll have agreed that, remember, with you offline, so they will be prepared for this information. And once that those hours are entered, they'll arrive at the summary screen. So here they would have a chance to check the answers. If there's anything that's not correct at that point, the parent can click any of those blue change options there and uh, make any edits before they submit. However, as soon as the parent does click on submit, you as the provider will see that agreement on your agreement screen. So it will land straight on your desk. Once they submit, a unique reference number will be generated for each agreement. So they can have, it is possible to have up to four agreements. Or just the one. And each one will be sent to the relevant setting. So here, if I say, yeah, I'm happy with my request. I've had the conversation offline with the provider. That's what we had um, agreed on. So with this agreement, we've gone to the next screen. We've submitted the agreement successfully. And the system has generated this unique reference number, this G60 so, so number. 
So the requested funded childcare hours for this child, for Amy, has successfully been sent to setting and the name of your setting or the setting. And that's it. The parent can then click back on my agreements and return to their screen where they view their agreements for their child or children. So here is the summary, OK, of the parent's journey to request the childcare offer hours to set up the agreement. So it sounds as if the parents have a lot of steps to take, but they would have had that conversation uh, with you and with the LA, so would, they would know um, what to input. They are actually supported by the LA, so for any um, help the parents need, the LA's will support them. But we just wanted you to see the process that they go through in its entirety, just so hopefully it's easier for you to understand where a lot of this information comes from when you look at those agreements. Uh, and also just to reiterate that this is not a booking system. The purpose of the agreement is to ensure that the parents receive the hours they wish and the hours they are entitled to from the funding with the childcare offer. So here, all the yellow boxes that you see uh, are the steps that I've just shown you that the parent takes, that they sign in about the offer, which child, they confirm they've had the conversation with you offline and they know when they want that agreement end date to end or they accept the eligibility end date. And then they select their early education setting if it's been confirmed or they can update it if it hasn't at that time. Um, the, the system will calculate how many childcare offer hours are available to that child, especially with regard to term time when you've got that element of early education. And then they would select your, hopefully your setting, your childcare setting. So you need to register that um, and confirm the setting or settings during term time, holiday time or both. And then they get the summary, the parent will check that information, submit it, get the unique reference number, which is generated automatically by the system. And then here is your role as the provider. So in blue there, because you can, you'll have access to this recording again. So when you look at it again, you'll see that as the provider, it's your role now to review this agreement. The parent can also still view the agreement. And the local authority, who's in red here on the screen, um, has the function to view the agreement. So there's full transparency um, on this system. So let's have a look at your role. So for you, uh, you would review the agreement that's now just landed on your dashboard. So that would mean that you need to sign in, as the parents do, sign into the government gateway and arrive at your dashboard. But let me just show you the process when you do arrive at the dashboard. I've got a key here. Again, the parent is in yellow. The provider, yourselves, are in blue. And anything in red are uh, steps or actions by the local authority. So you've gone into your dashboard, you've clicked on the link for agreements, and you're here. You're reviewing that agreement. Your option is to accept. And when you accept, you'll have an accepted notification coming up on your screen. And this is quite colourful because the parent, the provider, yourselves and the local authority, each one of you can view that agreement. But each one of you have different roles. So this, this is the transparency on this system. However, um, 
you may review it and choose to reject. Maybe if the parent has asked for more hours than you agreed during your offline conversation. Um, then you can speak to the parent and say, I, th I think you've entered the incorrect number of hours because we discussed X number of hours. So if you go down the route to reject, then you again, the, the agreement itself will be removed straight away off your list of agreements. And I'll, sh I'll show you your list of agreements to make it clear what exactly happens. So that agreement has been thrown out and for the parent, the parent gets uh, the reject notification on their dashboard, but the parent needs to do one extra step to you where they actually click the remove request button and then it gets removed from their dashboard. And I'm going to take you through these screens as well to clarify the accept and reject um, steps. However, you have got another option, which is to change the agreement hours. I've just put down C slides, so there's a few steps for you. So the role for the provider is really that. What you see on the screen there is to accept, reject or change agreement hours. That's your role. So let me explain with the screens that you'll come across. So first of all, let's go down this journey where you as a provider accepts that agreement. So you would sign in with your government gateway. You would arrive at the dashboard. So for those who have registered your setting and have received that activation pin and entered it into the system, so you would receive that activation pin through the post. You enter that activation pin onto your dashboard and then you'll have access to everything. So this dashboard screen you see now is what you expect to see when you've registered your setting. You'll have access to claims. You can see a link there to claims and you'll have an access to agreements, which is what we're focusing on today. Um, I've got a, a shot there of a screen that has more than one setting. So if you're a provider that manages more than one setting, then obviously you register each one of those settings. You register a new setting, there's a link there. And it would look like that actually. You'd have a red button where you can switch between each one of your settings and view the claims and the agreements for each one of the settings without needing to go to sign out and sign back in again. OK, so that's just a little sideline for you when you register a setting. Here I'm going to click on agreements and just focus on agreements for a second. So provider agreements status. Let me explain. This is a list of all your agreements for all those children. So the children's names will all be listed in alphabetical order. Alongside the children's names will be the parent or guardian name. And then the third column here you can see will be the agreement type. So the agreement type, as I mentioned, when the parent sets up the agreement could be just a term time agreement, could be just a holiday time agreement, or it could be both. So quite a few of these are term and holiday time agreements with this setting. Then you have a status column here. So I've got statuses where the agreements have been approved. Where there's ending, so the ending status is when, if you remember, the parent has the option to agree to that the child can offer for the whole time the child is eligible. Or there was a question where they could, they were asked, do you want this child care offer to go all the way to the end or do you want to end it? And if at a different date. And that's where the parent has to submit 
the different end date. So that's why you may see the status of ending on your screens. You can view then the actual date when it's been selected to end. Otherwise, at this stage where you're reviewing the agreement, you can see in orange, I've got Fern Jones and Gareth Lloyd's um, agreement is waiting to be reviewed, along with a notification at the top of the screen in a different colour. It's going to be in red, actually, where it says you have outstanding agreements that requires your attention. So you'd focus on the review. Your only action here, the last column, is to review. So that's exactly what you would expect to see on your agreements screen. I'm going to focus on Fern Jones for now. I'm going to click on review to review that outstanding agreement. And here you'll see the details. So you'll have the reference number. You'll have the weekly term time dates and more importantly, the number of hours has been requested, 10 hours here, and the holiday time as well, how many hours and the start and end date. So on this one, that was exactly what you discussed during your offline conversation with Fern Jones's parents, and you would click on accept. So you've got accept, reject, or change agreement hours on the bottom. Those are your options. So for now, you're going to click on accept and you'll have a green notification. So green is good to go. You have a green notification to say, yep, yeah, you've accepted that childcare offer agreement for this child, for Fern Jones. And then on your list of agreements, um, you may have all your statuses. Fern in particular has now changed to approved. So if it's green, it's good to go. Let's see what the parents will see. So I've got a white background. So the white background means it's the steps taken by the parent. So I know this uh, probably is very small writing for you. So um, this is the child summary of the childcare offer. So don't worry too much about the actual wording that um, appears here. But this is the whole summary for Fern. So the parent can actually see, um, they have a yearly summary, so they see how many weeks are remaining as well. So this system will, will show them the number of weeks remaining once the claims are in action. Then it's the uh, term time hours and the holiday time hours, if that's what they requested. And obviously this is what Fern has requested. And when I click on an option here, which is to view or cancel as a parent, I've just made that a little bit bigger. So you can see that the agreement for the parent looks just the same as the way you viewed it on your provider screen. And the parent, can choose to cancel an agreement, but I'm going to come back to that. I'll be moving on to explaining about cancel after we've done this, these steps. So just to make that a little bit clearer for you to read, this is the parents summary screen on the agreement. And this is what's happened when you as a provider has reviewed the information agreed with the hours and the dates that you'd already discussed during your offline conversation and you approved. OK. What happens with a rejected agreement? What happens if the conversation you had offline doesn't match with the number of hours the parent has now inputted in the system? So again, remember you go online, you arrive in your dashboard, <clears throat> you click on the link for your agreements and from the list of agreements, you select the one to review. And this time, these hours, for example, don't match with uh, what you said so you're simply going to reject. You haven't got those hours available. That's not what you'd agreed. 
and you're going to just simply click on reject. You will then have the notification on your screen. I'm on a blue background on your screen to say that you've rejected. And it will get pulled off straight away from your list of agreements. For the parent, they will also have a notification. They will always have notifications to say what's happening and they would click to view the rejected changes and they will see the hours that they requested and that you've rejected. They just have to click another button and then it's removed from their screens. But you had this other option, which is to change the agreement hours before approval. So as a provider, um, when you reviewed the agreement in this instance, you could see that the number of hours weren't quite right. You've spoken to the parent and you've agreed that they perhaps misunderstood, but they've entered the number, the number of hours in incorrectly. It was just a mistake. So before you go ahead and approve, you have got the chance to change the agreement hours. So on your screens, just to show you once again, you have accept, reject, change agreement hours. You would click on change agreement hours. You're faced with this screen. And from the 20 hours um, for this person, Edward, for this child, you enter the revised weekly hours. So you're going to say, actually, it was 10 hours we discussed. That's what we agreed. So that's fine. I'll enter it here. So you put in the 10 hours, zero minutes, and you continue. And then it asks you just to confirm that you have had that discussion with the parents. So yes, I'm going to click on the tick box here to say I have agreed the number of hours be funded with the parent guardian. So you tick the box and you click on submit and you then have the green notification. To say that that's been updated. And on your summary screen with all your agreements, you will see that here with Edward, the status has now changed to parent review. So it's now landed back with the parent to do the final review with that change of hours. So let's see what happens in the parent's screen. So here we are, the parent is now reviewing that change. So it says the setting has suggested changes to your recent request. And now it's up to the parent just to review these changes. So they'd click on view changes and they'll arrive at this screen where the hours is now 10 hours because that was the original conversation, but they still have the option to either accept the changes or reject the agreement. So I'm just going to show you the process of what happened there. So the provider changes the hours. This is before approval. So on in blue, there's all the steps that you took, the ones I just went through to change the agreement hours to match what was discussed on the offline conversation all the way through to the status of parent review, parent review status on your screen. And then here for the parent, if they accept, then it's approved on both your screen and on the parent's screen. If they reject the agreement, the agreement gets pulled off your screens. But for the parent, the hours are credited back to the parent so they can then go ahead and create a new agreement. And that would be with yourself or with a different setting. So they will have their hours, hours credited. OK. Um, 
there was an option for parents to cancel an agreement. So let me explain this. So only the parent can cancel an agreement and also the LA has the ability to do so. So we suggest that the parent only cancels an agreement after discussion with their child care setting with you to ensure that the parents are compliant with your private contracts, terms and conditions. Otherwise, the parent may be liable to pay the notice period. So this, the, when they cancel, they need this needs to have been agreed with your setting offline. So cancelling an agreement has no impact on their contractual obligation. The parents will remain attached to the original provider for such period as the contract stipulates. It doesn't affect the providers or your private contract. Um, let me just show you those screens for the parent to cancel an approved agreement. Here they have the option to view or cancel and this is the button to cancel the agreement. And what's important to note for parents and for yourselves is that if they cancel this particular agreement, for example, has got weekly term time hours and weekly holiday time hours on the one agreement under the one reference number. So when the parent cancels the agreement, both the term time and holiday time agreement gets cancelled because it's under the one agreement reference number. As it happens. So it could, so they can create, remember, I can create an agreement as a parent for term time, which includes the early education element, uh, or for holiday time separately. Can have up to four agreements for two settings, two separate settings. Okay, so let's continue. You cancel an agreement, then there's the option to click on to say, yes, I want to cancel agreement. So that's confirmed. And then the parent needs to enter the cancellation date. That's mandatory. They can't do this without entering the cancellation date because you will see that on your agreement. You will see that it's been cancelled and you will see the date that the parent inputs at this stage. So they need to input the cancellation date. It can't be after the eligibility end date. So they enter that in the box and click on submit. So for any cancelled agreement, you as the provider, I've got a blue background here, we'll see that cancelled agreement. It will show up um, with the status of ending, which would allow you to click on the view option there. And I'll just show you this um, to see the actual end date. So in this instance, Thomas Jones didn't go to the end of his eligibility date, they cancelled it on the for the 1st of September. So you as the provider sees that information instantly. OK, so the parent is the person that can cancel. The parent can request the local authority as well to do the cancel option. They would sign in, they would view a cancel, they'd confirm the cancel agreement, but there's mandatory that they enter the cancellation date, otherwise they can't continue because that then on the last step, which is in blue and yellow, because this happens for the parent and for you as providers, you will see that agreement with the status of ending 
and you'd be able to see the actual cancellation date. What happened there? Um, and as I mentioned, the parent will have the uh, hours credited back to them so they can create a new agreement. Okay, LA, I'm just nearly coming to the end just to let you know. So here the LA, the LAs can, the local authorities can also view agreements. They go through the step to search for a child for Amy or Thomas for Edward and so on. And they would arrive at this type of screen. Again, it might be quite small writing, but let me explain. I've got it on a red background just to indicate that this is the local authority it has visibility of the agreements for those children children. They'll have details of the child's date of birth, uh, the parents details, they'll have access to the eligibility application. So as I say, a lot of this information is fed into the agreement journey when they set up the agreements. And the LAs will also see exactly the same as you and the parent. They'll see the details of the term time hours with whichever settings. They'll have the name of the setting and the holiday time hours. They'll have the name of which setting that child is receiving. They are term time hours and the holiday time hours and the status, of course, will show up as approved. But the LA can also cancel. So the action that they can do is view details or cancel. So they can also cancel if they've been requested to by the parent or they may simply want to cancel, may need to cancel and stop, therefore stop the settings claims for whatever reason. So we each one of us has visibility, a parent, yourselves as providers and local authority. And that brings me to the end of that journey. So I, I hope that helps your understanding of the agreements process, what the parents need to input and therefore why you see certain information on your screens. But for us providers, your role is to review the information on the agreements and accept, reject or change um, the hours with the parent. So here um, for further help, you have your contact in the local authority, uh, but they haven't actually had the training as yet. Their training will be happening a uh, week after next. So uh, they may not be able to answer all your questions at the moment. Um, there's also your local family information service. There is supporting information available online. This recording will be uploaded as soon as possible and made available online. There's further information generally for you as providers on gov.wales, which uh, I expect you've already seen. And again, just a note at the end there that there will be a live event regarding claims on the 5th and 6th of December in English. There is a Welsh one also on the 6th of December. So I hope that helps. I'm sure you might have had some questions there. So I just want to say, um, Thank you very much for your time this morning. Thank you for attending.